Hello, my name is Sander van Dijk and in this video I'm going to teach you how you can make this. It's actually one of the elements that was used in the Blend Manifesto animation. I'll be sharing how I approach this animation and show you some handy techniques that you can use in other projects as well. After Effects is a very deep tool and it can take years to master. But if you're looking for a way to get to the next level as an animator, then check out Advanced Motion Methods, where I teach you exactly how I've used After Effects on projects for some of the biggest brands in the world. Also, you can download the project files I'm using in this video to follow along or practice after you're done watching. Details are in the description. Now let's get started. So first of all, how do we get a shape like that? It's actually really difficult to draw. So luckily, uh, I've actually included a file where it's already done. So you could just grab that if you don't want to draw this thing on your own. I would like to challenge you to try because it's actually really hard. If you want a uh, hint, uh, what, we, what I can do is I could just show you how to do this with a square because it's a lot easier to do that with, with a shape like that. So just draw a square, hit Command C, Command F to paste it in the same place. And then let's just create lines for now. So you have lines here and then the outside shape, uh, let's make some round corners for those. And then what you can do is you can just, you know, move these shapes like this and you can start to see the effect already occurring, right? Duplicate that once more like this. And now you can see this shape starts to form. You know, you have two options. You could either go completely to the edge or you could do it like halfway. So there's lots of different ways to go about it or to recreate these shapes. So if you end up doing this tutorial, try to do it with a different shape uh, just to see uh, what new challenges that brings. And maybe you can eventually share that with the community as well so that everyone can learn from each other's you know, creation. All right, now let's get this into After Effects. So there's a couple ways you can bring things into After Effects. One of the easiest ways is to just grab a shape like this, copy it, go to After Effects, go to your pen tool, click anywhere in the field and just hit paste. And then that, will, that way it will come in. Now there are some challenges with like, as far as where the anchor point is. So if I just copy this shape and I paste it into After Effects like this, we showed a title save thing. Right now it's in the center over here. But then when I paste uh, another object like this one, it's obviously not going to line up. So, uh, you know, it kind of does whatever with the anchor point. So that's why I actually have this shape that you see here around it. Because if you use that shape as well, so you click here and you click on that. So now you have two objects selected. You copy that, go to After Effects, go to the Pen Tool, hit Paste. Now you can see that luckily actually the path that we don't want actually came in as a mask this time. And the path that we do want ended up being the path. So in this case, I could just delete the mask, but this shape will actually be at the right position in my After Effects comp. So I could do the same with another shape. Just make sure I constantly select this larger shape that's on the outside of that shape. Let's do this again. Paste. And now you can see it actually lines up uh, really well. And the reason for that is because if you always select a shape that's like outside of your drawings, um, After Effects will always make the center based on the largest object in your scene. So this is kind of like a hack to figure out how you can get around it. So yeah. Now that's kind of the, the poor man's way because it's a lot of work and it's like crappy, it doesn't work half of the time. So you have to copy and paste a lot of stuff. So if you're, if you're smart, you actually picked up Overlord, a plugin by Adam Plough. So this way, what I can do is I could select any shape and just push it to After Effects like this. And I believe it actually pushes it in the right place as well. See, so you don't have to do that whole like selecting of another shape uh, on the outside. That way you could just send stuff to After Effects. So let's select all of this. And then push those to After Effects. Now there are a couple different options here because right now all those shapes came in to the same shape layer. Now you can obviously use Zach Lovett's script explode shape layers, which is incredible. Explode and boom, you have all your elements separately now. Uh, I believe 
uh, Overlord might have this as well. If you click this little explosion button, that does the same trick. So yeah, either way, I'm just, again, I'm just showing you all the different options that you can go about bringing this into After Effects. Another option you have is actually taking the Illustrator file, throwing it in After Effects, footage, throwing it in here, right click, create, and then create shapes from vector layer. And when you do that, your Illustrator layer uh, disappears, and then you have this shape layer here that has all these different groups. So you can go from there as well. It really depends on the, on the situation you're in, what technique is, is best for you. So, okay, let's actually copy everything over with Overlord. So let's push this over. Let's call original one. Uh, so first of all, it's a bit small. So let's create a null layer here, call that zoom. Put, link everything to it and then just scale this up 400 pixels. Yeah, that seems about right. So in order to create this effect, uh, what I'm gonna do is I need a duplicate of this shape. So let's just duplicate this and then color it brown. And then now shape four is brown. So think about that this uh, shape over here, which is slightly different color brown, let's actually correct that. Let's think about this shape here, passing on its color to this shape. So that would mean that the path of this one um, shoot like reduce like this, it should like disappear. And then this path over here, the new one, should appear. So it should come from here and start filling up like this. So you can see how those paths are moving. So essentially, I wanna reveal this shape. Let's focus on it on its own. I wanna reveal this shape from this edge over here. So the way I do that is, let's undo all that stuff and let's focus on this layer again. Uh, what I do is, first of all, this is the shape I want to end up with, so I'm just gonna search for path here, set a keyframe, and then use Option Shift, right arrow key to push that keyframe 10 frames into the future. So let's then uh, focus on what the shape should look like at this time. So at this time, what I wanna do is take all these points and actually move them, sometimes it's multiple points, and just actually move them all the way to this end. And what really helps here is that you could see that these points match. Like if there were more points along this line than there are on this line, it could potentially be a problem because then you get some weird shapes. But in general, I'm trying to like keep everything pretty parallel or symmetric so that it's not doing any uh, weird things. So here around this corner, I might have to travel to this dot because you could see that the arc starts here before it was straight and then here it's straight and then the arc starts here. So I don't wanna go here because that's gonna give me some weird uh, artifacts. What I wanna do is I wanna respect that curve and just go here. And then for this point, I might have to end up somewhere over here. So you're trying to find like the equivalent point on the opposite side of the line so that when it all starts to move, it moves in one straight shot versus like if if this was over here, what you could see is that you know it, it starts to form this curve here, but it doesn't really it doesn't really work properly. So that's how you do that. And then for situations like this here, when points come really close together and they had some curvature to it, make sure those tangents are gone. So I'm just gonna click on them once, or does that work? No, it doesn't. That's an illustrator. In After Effects, you just have to like drag them to the point. And then that way, you could see that it makes a way better connection there. It looks actually like the shape is scaling down into that other point. So that's what you, that's how you approach corners like that. And then for things like this, you could either grab the line and like push it halfway there, and then sort of use these tangents, to try and match this shape. And you'll never get a hundred percent right, but I mean, unless you could read the values of the other tangents and really like make everything perfect, but I don't think we can ha access that data. So yeah, roughly eyeballing it works really well. So another thing I like to do sometimes when I'm doing this, that's actually pretty good. Don't see much line left, but 
Another thing I like to do sometimes is that you see this zoom layer here, right? So this is scaled up like 400%. Sometimes I just do times two on the composition settings. So this will be an 8K clip. And then I also do times, oops, times two on the zoom layer. So then everything becomes like twice the size and you have a lot more detail to work with. So make sure you're on full settings here because now you can see a lot more details and really, you know, fine tune this. And then once you're, you know, once you're happy with that, then you can scale this thing back and then you'll probably end up with a, a much better picture because it's kind of like how you sometimes film in 4K and then you scale it down to 1080 and it looks a lot better because you had a lot more resolution to begin with. So that's a trick that I always use there. Just get as much resolution as you can and then you can always scale it down because if you built this whole thing and then you realize, ah, I gotta scale it up, and when you scale it up, you see all these like little details that you didn't see when it was so, so, so small, then, you know, you have to redo it potentially. So, and now that I'm looking at it, I think I actually animated it the wrong way. So it should have actually gone from, you know, this edge should have actually gone to the inside versus the inside edge going to the outside. So, you know, I guess that's two ways to go about it. You can also make it rotate the other way if you want to. And that's, I guess, what you, what you can do uh, as well. Actually, this allows me uh, to show you another way to actually do this because sometimes it can be very tedious to go in and like change the paths here in After Effects. I mean, you don't really have a lot of control. So sometimes Illustrator can be a more comfortable tool to work with on some of these details. These points actually snap together. So that makes like a perfect connection, right? So now you could see that this line is a lot cleaner here in the middle than we could ever get in an After Effects because in After Effects, those points just don't snap together. It's still a little hard around the curves, but you know, in Illustrator, you have a lot more zooming capacity than in After Effects in order to get those tangents to show up in the right place. So another thing you could do is, even though these are two separate keyframes, you could design these two keyframes in Illustrator. So that's what actually what I've done right here. You could see an on and off layer. The on layer has the original shape and the off layer has a shape that I've actually reduced down the same technique as I just showed you. Uh, it still has a little bit of artifacts here and there that you see, but I think it's a much cleaner, thinner line than I could ever get in After Effects. So for the, in that case, what I can do, get rid of these keyframes and then just go to Illustrator. Let's grab the on shape here. This one, I'm just gonna push that to After Effects, but make sure that you have this path selected because now you saw that Overlord actually pushed it on this path versus creating a new layer. So, so now that that came in, let's create a keyframe here and push that keyframe 10 frames into the future with Option Shift right uh, arrow key. And now here's the cool thing. I can actually still select this path and then select a whole different shape here in Illustrator and push that over to that same layer, it creates a new keyframe here. And if your paths are roughly the same point, it actually knows how to interpret between those two, which is really cool. That way you could actually design your keyframes in Illustrator, which is a much more capable program than After Effects sometimes as far as drawing goes. And you can just copy and paste them to After Effects. Cool, so that's great. So now we have our animation here. And then what we can do now is uh, let's just get rid of the older shapes because this is the main shape that has the uh, animation on it. I'm just gonna call it side one. I'm just gonna duplicate it, rotate 120 degrees like I just did and color it red. And then duplicate it, rotate it 240 degrees this time and color it purple. And then here you get the animation. Now you can see that there's something wrong here. So what we need is we need a backdrop with different colors. So I'm just gonna duplicate all these. So I have side four, five, and six, and then uh, reveal the keyframes for this and just push these keyframes all the way to the start, like this. Now nothing's happening because they are the same color. So it's just revealing the same color. So let's, so yeah, you can either shift the colors or rotate the shapes 120 degrees. So right now I could just add 120 to this, add 120 to that, 
and add 120 to this. And then that way, we get our effect. Great. So there's a couple ways you can animate this. Of course, you can apply easing here, or you can take this composition, uh, move it into a new comp, and then apply keyframes there. So say we wanted to do this, you know, it's fine to apply easing here, like this, F9, uh, so that it looks smoother. But if you were to stack some of these uh, effects, so if I create more objects like this, let's move them over, uh, let's rotate them again, plus 120, plus 120, plus 120. So now you actually have a double um, animation. Now if you leave all these keys linear, what you could do is you know that this goes to frame 20, so you could take this composition, throw it in a different one, uh, apply a timer map, go to frame 20 over here, set a keyframe, and then instead of uh, applying easing to these keyframes inside, what you could do is you know do it here. So let's apply some easing, and now it creates a double motion, you see? It goes through uh, two cycles, so that's cool. All right, so that's how you create this Pentros triangle infinite shape and animate it. There are many shapes that you can use this trick with, so I'm curious what version you'll come up with. If you happen to post this on Instagram, then please hashtag it with advanced motion methods so I can check it out. The download link with the project files are in the description of this video, so check that out to get started. And if you didn't get enough and you're curious how to continue this animation into the Mobius strip, then check out this video, part two, and hit the subscribe button on this channel if you want more tips from other instructors as well. And if you're ready to deep dive into After Effects workflows that some of the best artists in the industry are using, then check out advanced motion methods from School of Motion. Thanks for watching. Take care.